It's the day after Thanksgiving, and uh, I should be packing up that awesome Bob dual jogging stroller. Uh, anybody's interested, it's the best jogging stroller in the market. But regardless, I don't need it anymore. I have a friend who does, so I should be packing that up into a box so I can ship it. That said, I had to clean it off because I didn't want to give him a dirty one. So while that dries, I figured I'd sneak a little shop time in. So what I have before me is the fourth wall panel cut and ready to go in. Um, if I turn around in the shop, you can see we've got one, two, three, ah, it's the fifth one, sorry. It's the fifth wall panel. It's the last full one, and it'll trim out the side of this window, and it actually runs down the wall, it runs to about here, and it's just gonna leave me one more partial panel to do back here, but you can see, i move this out of the way, back here I haven't quite filled in yet, um, so I've got to do a little bit more insulating work and prep this back section. But uh, as I'm feeling a little froggy now, I may even get to that this afternoon. We shall see. i got other things to do this afternoon. But since I had to wait for the stroller to dry, I figured what better opportunity than to get this last piece in. So similar to the others, what I've done is I cut the bottom foot off of it because from there up to here is only seven feet, so it rests on a piece there. So I chopped the bottom foot off and then I screw a little handle onto it and I bring it in here and I get it temporarily fit and I put two screws on it. Then I reach into the window opening and trace, well I, I trace the corner and down the bottom and I trace the corner and down the top. I don't trace this leg because all I need to do is connect corner to corner and make this side one. So I get that marked out and then I mark with the chalk line where these horizontal, we we'll call them studs are. So I know where my fasteners need to go. Uh, then I bring the piece out there, and I use the track saw, and I cut out for the window. Then once I've got the window cut out, I've got more references. So then I measure for the one, two, three electrical boxes that are having here. And why I cut the window at first is because I can now reference off this edge, which is now cut on the sheet, and measure in to get the location of this box. So. Um, the easiest way to get the window accurate is to set it up and mark it. I don't have that luxury with the electrical boxes, but by doing the window first, again, it's just easier to measure for the electrical boxes. Uh, in terms of the actual piece, I cut out for the window using the track saw. Uh, I didn't want to overcut it. These are the walls of my shop. I want it to be a little fancy, so I stopped the cut short, and then I just finish it with a jigsaw. It comes out with a pretty clean cut. It's not perfect, but it's much cleaner than if I'd overcut with the track saw and that gives me this cut out for the window and then the wind the electrical boxes rather once I trace out uh, this one over here probably shows best I've got this corner marked out and then I lay an empty box on here I trace around the box drill a hole in the middle and then I cut the whole thing out freehand with the jigsaw it's not perfect but it's certainly clean enough to fit the electrical box in. The electrical box will hide it and when I put a plate over it, no one will ever see. So it's more than good enough for the situation I need. Whereas this edge is going to be exposed. Uh, uh, so I wanted this to be much cleaner and neater. So now I've got my temporary handle reattached. Even with these cutouts, the three quarter inch OSB is relatively heavy and I need to fit it into place entirely on my own. So with this handle here, I can throw a knee against it. Once I fight it into place and the handle lets me pull up and help get into place. I throw a knee against it, I pull on the handle, and then I've got these screws already started, and I'll sink this screw in, and then I come over here, pull on the handle with my left hand, sink this screw in, that'll hold it in place, then I can go around and permanently fasten the whole thing. So, it's time to start, uh, time to set it up. Here it is fit. Uh, again, use the handle, pull it into place. Um, this is the edge I was paying attention to as I set it, so this is perfectly flush with the windowsill. See, it's a little off. I'm choosing not to get crazy about it for no capping trim. I think it's a pretty good fit. It's uh, just a little bit proud along this edge. By the time it gets here, it's good again. Pretty good here. Uh, pretty nice fit. So I think that's good enough. I've got those two screws I temporarily started set. You see here my electrical boxes line up okay. Um, now I'm going to start permanently screwing it in. And we're done. I've fastened here to countersink those. Well, first I countersink them because 
when I screw that far to the e that close to the edge, that kind of thing, you can see it's not focusing properly. You can see that bit of blowback I get right there on the top. Uh, sorry for the lack of focus. Um, so I use just a countersink bit chucked in a 12 volt drill. And I only countersink the ones that are around the hole because they're so close. These in the field, you know, they kick up a little bit of, um, of chips around them, but they countersink themselves pretty well. And I'm gonna probably just hit the whole thing with a sander quick before I paint it. So that's not a big deal. Um, so I've got it fastened all the way around the hole. I fasten it up there on the stud, and the stud drops by the window, fasten it again, fasten there, fasten across here, and once more across the bottom. So this is now the penultimate panel on this wall. As I said before, i got to fill in that back corner and then run this last one. But now, if I stand back here, this wall is looking like it's almost done. Pretty soon I'll be up to electric, and then thankfully I can push stuff back against the wall. That will be fantastic.